Hi, this is Pastor Steve. I'm really excited that you're here with us today. We're halfway through our series, part three of a six-part series on the book of Ephesians. And I, my hope and prayer is that you've just been taking this opportunity to dig down into the Word, to get into the book of Ephesians, just study some of the verses, let God really speak to you. What I love about the book of Ephesians, as we talked a little bit about last time, is even how the Apostle Paul wrote the book. He wrote theology, some of the best, most powerful, deep things we could know about Christ, our freedom, our adoption, all of those amazing things. But then woven in and out of it are his prayers. And I think this is just really a great insight for us as to how we as believers should even approach the Word of God and, uh, and really let God speak to us in the midst of it. Instead of just reading a section and kind of getting up and going on our way, to just really meditate, to think, to contemplate, to consider what is it that God is saying to us? What does it mean? Lord, what do you, what do you want to say to me? And to just get so deeply intimate and personal with the Word of God, because that's exactly what God intends for it to be in our lives. A lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, a place of inspiration and encouragement, and really just fortifying our lives that we are ready to take on anything that this world brings to us in real time. And so I'm really thankful for you being a part of this life group and, and all of the things that have been behind the scenes, the, the discussion questions and the conversations and the food and the fellowship and everything that's going on, just helping us grow stronger as followers of Christ. So I want to encourage you today as we get into the Word, let's really have it in our heart to grow deep with God, but to all, always leave another chair at the table. We want to just have an outreach culture and, and just always be inviting friends to come and even join us even in the last few weeks we have as we take a look at the book of Ephesians. So I hope you'll do that as well as gearing up for our Inspire Conference as it's right around the corner. And we want to get everybody there because we know God's going to do some great, great things. Okay, let's take a look today at Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. So what he's saying is, is it's interesting that under house arrest, he, he recognized that he was a prisoner, not of the Romans. He was ultimately a prisoner for Jesus Christ. And he was at peace about that because he understood there was purpose in everything that God was doing in his life. Hardship, struggles, even being under house arrest, he knew it's not just serving men or Caesar or the things of this world, but he was ultimately serving Christ Jesus. And the purpose of even his suffering and being where he was at that time was for a greater good. He spoke to the Gentiles, not even just to the church at Ephesus, but we all believe that he meant for this to be a circular letter that would go first to the church in Ephesus and then be used in a greater realm. And obviously, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit had in mind because 2,000 years later, we identify this as Holy Scripture. God breathed inspired words that mold and shape our lives. And they really give us incredible insight. The Apostle Paul was a bridge builder, was used as a bridge ministry. Obviously, he himself was born in, as a Jew, was raised in a, a fluent, uh, prestigious Jewish family. But now God has so radically changed his life that he has been sent forth to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And here he is under house arrest. He has faced a lot of difficulties we've talked about. But out of the midst of all of that, here in Ephesians chapter 3, starts to unfold deep insights and revelation as to who Jesus is, why he came, the significance between the Jews and the Gentiles. As we were just studying earlier in Ephesians chapter 2, we found that there was great division, racial strife and conflict between the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews saw themselves as God's holy people, which they were. Uh, they saw themselves, though, through the lens of arrogance. They, they saw themselves as being better than the Gentiles. And the Gentiles, in turn, did what most any other human would do. They resented that kind of arrogance and resented the influence of the Jews. And there was hostility at an incredible level between the two of them. But the reason Jesus came was to be our Redeemer, and not just a Redeemer for the Jews, but to come and to seek and to save the lost. And here's what Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul brings to us. He said this, 
In reading this then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to men in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery, this is the mystery, is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together of the promise of Christ Jesus. I mean, this is profound. I mean, in our day and time, when we're seeing in our streets, in our cities, the rise of racism, and, and we're just going, we've been seemingly going backwards in so many ways. And people are wondering, how do we ever find peace? How do we ever find wholeness? And the answer is in Jesus. Jesus leveled the playing ground at the cross. All lives are equal. There's no greater value to the Jews than the Gentiles or the Gentiles greater than the Jews. Jesus came to die for all mankind and opened up the gateway and the pathway of salvation that through a relationship with Jesus, all people could not only have a relationship with God and have peace with God, but now we have the opportunity to have peace with each other because we have through Christ a sense of well-being and value and we find that we are called to love one another, care for each other. We're, care, we're called to, to reach out to each other, meet each other's needs, carry the burdens. It's an amazing thing that happens in the body of Christ. And what the Apostle Paul is saying is this is an unbelievable mystery that was not revealed until this time. But now through the life of Jesus, we get to see it through the lens of salvation. We get to see it through the lens of the kingdom of God. And together we can build an incredible future because of, of the coming together in one body, one heart, one mind. That's the great unifying work of our incredible Lord Jesus Christ. And so I hope that today you will even take this to heart because we want to be salt. We want to be light in our generation. And there's just so many places of conflict, there's so many big issues today and uh, things that are coming on the scene. And, and people are struggling with what, what's politically correct to say or what is right to say. Uh, how should we respond to each other? How should we treat people who have differing opinions and different lifestyles than where we are? And we need to see that what the gospel does is the gospel brings an answer to all people, to all nations. It's a message uh, that's not just for Americans. It's not just for Europeans. This is a message for Muslims. This is a message for Hindus. Wherever people are, it's the name of Jesus that brings us to the highest point. It's the revelation of Jesus as the Son of God, as our Savior and our Redeemer that changes everything. Think with me for a moment about what could happen in the nations today if we would begin to rally around the name of Jesus. If we could just see Jesus for who He really is, wash the face of Jesus where, where people could see Him in the truth of the Scripture, clearly and powerfully the Son of God, our great Redeemer, our great Lord, and who He really is. That's the revelation coming to us through a man in chains in Rome. And he says, you know what? I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ for your sake. He knew there was purpose, and the purpose was to bring Gentiles and Jews together and begin to teach about the kingdom of God that supersedes all races, tongues, tribes, and is unified through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's an amazing and beautiful truth about Jesus. What's interesting is that we continue in the scripture today, we're going to find the Apostle Paul going right back to what we talked about. He's been delivering this incredible message about Jesus, about the church, about the manifold wisdom of God and the bringing together of the Jews and the Gentiles into one body. And then he transitions. You know where he goes? Right back into prayer. So let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 and following. Here's what the word says. For this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Let's just pause there for a minute. So the, the Apostle Paul is just pouring himself out. Just a moment ago, he said, um, you know, because of Jesus, in verse 12, he said, because of Jesus and our faith in him, let us approach Christ with, with faith and freedom, confidence. And then he said, I ask you, don't be discouraged about my sufferings for you, 
because they're for your glory. So this intimate relationship that he's expressing in these verses, what he's, what he's saying is, I'm here to teach you. I'm here to teach you about Jesus. I'm here to teach you about the kingdom. And I just want you to be at peace, just like I'm at peace. My suffering has purpose. God's at work. There's something bigger here than just my own comfort. And the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm good with that. And then he transitions back to pray for them. You know, we ought to be praying for him is probably what the Ephesians were thinking. But the Apostle Paul loved them so much and he loved God's work and he loved what God wanted to do. And so he was praying. And he said, again, uh, much like he did in earlier uh, chapters where he was praying for God's illumination. He says, I kneel before the Lord who is uh, the father uh, of this entire family, both on heaven and on earth, where this family derives its name. And he says, I pray that he may strengthen you with power through his Holy Spirit in your inner being. So the Apostle Paul is basically saying, I'm praying that God will go so deep right down into your inner being, right into your core, that you would be strengthened with the strength of Jesus, that you'd have insight and discernment. And these big issues of life, these big social issues, and these issues of division and strife and conflict and people's different varying opinions and everything else. No, God wants you to be confident. He wants you to be strong. He wants you to have a core where you know who you are in Christ, what He's doing, and His hand upon you no matter what your circumstances. That's the message of the Apostle Paul. And in this prayer, he goes on. And he says, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have the power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Wow, this is a pastor's heart right here. You know, he loves his people. And he wants his people to be strong. He wants his people to be well-equipped for life. So he's interceding. He's praying. And, and even just, you know, pinning the words so that that message can go to them. They can even be aware of what's happening behind the scenes. Not only a theological teacher and a thinker and a strategist, but the heart of love and compassion for his people. And I can just say this to you. Uh, as, as the pastor of East Ridge and along with our team of pastors, we have a heart for you. And we're thankful even for these gathering places where, where the people of God can come together and encourage one another and strengthen each other and speak into each other's lives and cover each other in faith and in prayer. This is what the kingdom's about. This is this great family that God is building. And I want to just encourage you, love the work of God. Love the Lord. Love His church. You know, take on your heart uh, and, and, and just pray and believe one for another. And I know that as you will, that God will just take you deeper. You will just begin to abound in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will speak. You will have answers in real time in those moments of decision making and conversation and relationship building. Let God equip your life because that's exactly what He wants to do. I love this next couple of verses, very famous scriptures. You've heard a lot about this with different people that have come, like Pastor Jenkins and Priscilla Schreier and different ones that have preached to us right out of these verses, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His great power that is at work within us, to Him be glory in the church, and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. You know, when you think about these things, the, the Apostle Paul is just taking us to a whole nother level. He's, he's starting off saying, I want to remind you, you know, I'm a prisoner of Jesus, but it's for purpose. It's for your good. And he's basically saying this, I don't want you to feel bad about what I'm going through because it, it's for God. It's for his benefit. And here's what he's trying to do is elevate our sights and let us see what it really is to be an overcomer. He goes, you know, I'm praying that you would see this God who is able to do exceedingly above and beyond anything you could hope or imagine. You know, today, what are you hoping for? What are the things that are in your life? Is it a relationship? Is it a job? Is it a financial issue? Is it, is it a, a career path? Is it a place of ministry? What are the things that you're hoping for? God is able. You may be facing things that seem to be impossible. 
But what the Apostle Paul is saying to us is set your sights higher. Get your eyes on Jesus. Remember this. It's His kingdom. It's His church. He is the great and mighty God. So come to Him. Believe Him. Approach Him with faith. Approach Him with confidence because He has the power to do exceedingly above and beyond what you could even hope or you could even imagine. You know, there's people that need us to be operating in that kind of faith. There's people in your life who don't know the Lord, who don't have uh, a relationship with Christ, but they see you. They see your pathway. And as they watch you, you could be the greatest picture of Jesus that they'll ever see in their life. So I want to encourage you. Be people of huge faith, bold faith. Don't lay down. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give in. Even if you're facing trials and tribulations and you feel like things are going against you, be encouraged by the inspiration of the Apostle Paul and this incredible model that he laid in front of us. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Dive in. Reach further. Believe God. And He's going to show Himself mighty. There's, yet, there's miracles I'm, that are yet to unfold. Miracles that are yet to be seen. And I want to challenge you. Go after Him. As your pastor, we love you. We want God's best for you. We want these very things to spring up in your life. Boldness, confidence, strength just for you to be well equipped to go forth and live a bold life and walk in the joy and the presence of God and bear the fruit of the kingdom. You know, in just a moment, your facilitator is going to come and, and we've got some incredible questions that we want you to talk about. And I want to just week after week encourage you, be involved and share your stories, share your thoughts. And then let's pray one for another and let's pray for our church. And let's get behind our church in prayer in service, in giving, outreach. Let's really be kingdom-minded people. And once again, I want to just encourage you. Invite your friends. Let's have a culture of invitation. And let's believe God for miracles. Let's be salt. Let's be light. Let's be difference makers for the glory of God. Thank you for being here today.